Well, I was out getting a few flights on my Thunderbird and decided I would do a quick video and kind of an overview and, and maybe a, a, a tips video on my setup and, and what I've done up to this point. So I did add another piece of Velcro back here. So on the next model that I that I do for myself, or I may just wind up take this off and, and redo it, but I want to put a solid piece of Velcro to go from the front here all the way back to the edge of the, of the rear opening on the top here. And the reason being that just would be one long piece of Velcro and I could put my battery anywhere in this area. Now for the initial flight you want to run your battery up along here uh, but eventually you're going to want to start moving your battery back to, to find the sweet spot. Uh, the other thing is I have a low voltage alarm and what this will do is this I, I have this set so that it monitors the battery. It's only a couple dollars and it's definitely good insurance because you won't fly if you have this set up and it's working properly you'll know whenever your battery is starting to get low. Now what you what you do or what I do is I set the voltage the uh, alarm voltage at 3.6 so with a load uh, as soon as a, the, one of the cells drops to 3.6 the alarm starts going off. Now what that does is it gives me about uh, 30 seconds or so depending on how moderate I am with the power um, it gives me about 30 seconds of, of, of more run time uh, than I know I need to land so but generally I can go probably about a minute after I hear the alarm because at that point I start throttling back a lot because I'm going to want to descend to make an approach and land. So I do use the low voltage uh, alarm and it just simply velcros on here. It plugs into the balance plugs, pretty simple, uh, and it's good insurance. The other thing is this little strip of velcro right here. Now on the next one I do, I'm going to make it a little longer. So it's going to go from about here up to about this uh, nut here. And you put that on both sides. And what this is, is this is like a, uh, um, a finger grip. So when I get ready to launch, I just grab it here, and that way I'm not holding on to the G10 and, and throwing the model. One other tip about this piece of Velcro here, whenever I cut it, I've purposely made it a little bit along. It's about a 16th inch, hangs down about a 16th below this edge of the G10. And the reason for that is because I run my power wires under here and hook up to my battery. So my wires stay underneath this piece of G10, and because this Velcro is sticking down slightly, then my wire is actually rubbing up against the Velcro and not up against the G10 so that it can cut into or fray my wire. So just a tidbit of information, um, you know, run that piece of Velcro. Uh, you can run it long and uh, run it so that it sticks down uh, about a sixteenth of an inch and that'll save your wires. And one other thing is uh, remember about the, uh, the tail, the way it goes on is held in place with O-rings and that does a couple of things. Number one, it, it, it adds some forgiveness to your servo, helps uh, lengthen the life of your servo because now this tail can flex a little bit while it's on there so all the pressure is not going directly to the servo gears or, or servo itself. The other thing is to keep in mind that whenever you're flying, your trim, uh, depending on how the wind is, and you can see that tail is actually flexing pretty good just sitting here in the wind. So, and once you fly it, you'll notice the tail will actually lay back. Uh, and, and so that's how we get away without having a uh, elevator servos because this tail is actually floating. And depending on how fast you're going, dictates how far it lays back. Uh, so you might find that you'll climb and uh, fly better whenever you're not at wide open throttle, depending on what your battery voltage is. But uh, I find that, you know, I fluctuate the throttle some and I find that sweet spot for, for whatever it is I want to do, whether it's to climb or fly. And um, once I find it, then I uh, just adjust my throttle accordingly. The good thing about this whole setup is you only have two channels. So, you know, if a guy didn't have a uh, fancy radio, he could, he could actually use a two-channel radio and still fly the Thunderbird. So, because we're only using two channels. Uh, one other tip I can give you, notice all of my batteries have this tape around them. And you figure, well, why you got mass you don't want anybody to see what type of battery you're using? Uh, no, that's not why the tape is there. The reason the tape is there is whenever I was doing the, uh, the uh, R&D for this model, this bird, as you'll see in 
a lot of the the initial videos uh, whenever I first started the project that this this bird went in nose first a lot and what was happening is the velcro on my battery was on the heat shrink and then whenever it would go in the model would hit so hard that the battery would actually slide out of the uh, heat shrink tubing so what I did was I started wrapping masking tape around the battery at least twice um, on the end that was forward which would be this end here notice there's two layers of tape here there's two layers of tape and so what that did was it's since I did that I have not had any of the batteries come out of the shrink wrap so that's why I've done that and uh, it's worked really well then I put the the velcro on, right on top of that masking tape you believe it or not the masking tape actually works really well uh, on this side we take a look you can see that I have uh, the receiver it's a uh, double-sided tape to the frame my uh, antenna is taped to the frame my servo wire going back to the rudder servo that's taped to the frame uh, my throttle uh, the ESC is mounted on this side it's mounted on the same side the motor is and this just keeps everything clean the, the electronics goes on this side and the battery of course on the other side uh, one other thing about the model is this rear uh, whenever you build the model you'll find that there's some extra tape and uh, you can take and what I did was I put wound up putting like three layers of tape back here because this does get a workout and I've got quite a few flights on this already but uh, what I did was I reinforced it by taking a piece of tape and going from the edge here back and then uh, of course cutting the tape when I folded it over so that I didn't wind up with any creases in it and then I taped uh, or restitched it uh, stitched over what I had stitched before and just to reinforce it and uh, that actually adds help add some life to the wing so uh, all in all it's doing really well this is actually the prototype with the new wing and um, or the built wing that I did for the build video and uh, it's holding up really well so if you have any questions you can send me an email I'd be glad to answer your questions or help you in any way I can